Good morning, Mount Zion Church family. This is Albert Langston. Minister Albert Langston coming to you once again with our Sunday school lessons for, for this uh, week. And uh, the title of today's lesson is uh, David Anointed as King. And um, before I get started here this morning, uh, let's start with a word of prayer, please. So if you join me, bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, once again, we come together to be able to worship, to be able to study your word, to be able to study this, the, the stories and the, and the messages from uh, the Holy Scriptures. We ask that you open up our minds and our hearts that we may be able to receive uh, the message which you have given, which you have given us, uh, that we may be able to become more like you would have us be. For these and many other blessings, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, The message today comes from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And it is um, a, a message, it is, it is a story about, well, to me, it's, it's a story about what happens when you don't do what you're supposed to do when God tells you to do it. Okay, it's just that simple. Today we're going to look at David being selected as king. And it's just as important that, that day, it's just as important as David being selected as the new king of, uh, uh, of Israel, as the outgoing king. It's, just as, it's, it's, really as, it's really important that we see what is going on that causes David to be selected in the first place, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> Uh, as I said, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. And I'm going to break it up this way. I'm going to look at verses, first I'm going to look at verses 1 through 5. And they read this way. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I, have, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do and thou shalt anoint him, excuse me, and, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peacefully? And he said peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed 
excuse me, and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Let me just stop right there. First of all, we see that uh, Samuel, well, first of all, the Lord approached Samuel with a task. And God asked Samuel, why do you question what I tell you to do? You see, too many times we get into this thing that we think we know as much as God does. We're, we are frequently questioning what God's decisions are, but there must have been a reason. Even in our own lives, we question, well, why, why did God bless this person? Why did God do this over here? Why, how come he didn't do this for me? It ain't about you. And so what we see here is, is the Lord giving Samuel a task. And anyway, Samuel hesitated because he knew in order for Saul to be replaced, he would likely have to be killed. But the Lord, uh, but the Lord told Samuel to take a heifer as a sacrifice and he would be instructed how to do it. Now see, Samuel, I mean, uh, Saul ain't no pushover. Saul is the king. And Samuel is, is trying to be a loyal and faithful servant to him. But now he's got to make a decision. Am I going to be faithful, more faithful to the king? Or am I going to be more faithful to God that's sending me on a task? And so Samuel did was start, started doing what, uh, uh, started making the, making preparations. But see, let me back up here. The reason that Saul was going to be replaced, because see, God placed, made Saul the first king. And so there must have been a reason, that there must have been something that Saul did or didn't do that God didn't like. And it was. You see, Saul got the big head. Saul got there, and once he became king, he turned around and said, I can do this, and I can do that. Oh, uh, yeah, well, maybe God did put me here, but I'm in charge now. The agreement between him and God wasn't fulfilled. He broke the rules. God said, you got to go. And so when you don't do what God tells you to do, he has a tendency of, well, you know, he's God. <laughs> he, can do, he can do anything. The first person you don't want to tee off is God. And so it came time, it came time God just said, well, I haven't had enough. Let me put this into action. And Samuel became worried because he said, you know, this dude going to have me killed. So who do I obey? Do I obey God? Do I obey the king? Needless to say, you should be on the side of the most powerful. And if Saul is just a man and God is God, you're going to do what God say do. Okay? Now, let me get this out of my way. So, 
as, as, as uh, Samuel, excuse me, uh, so as uh, Samuel started to to make the trip to the journey to the areas and to make travel to do what he needed to do. Uh, it just seems like everybody knew he was coming. You know, it wasn't no surprise. He couldn't sneak up on Saul. Ain't gonna be no sneaking up on Saul. And see, in Saul's arrogance, he also become paranoid. You know, most, most people that, that get to the point where they are overconfident, one of the things that set in is paranoia. You know, there have been he, other human beings, Hitler and, and Mussolini and, and Donald Trump and everybody else that get these big heads about how powerful they are and when they're broken down, when, when reality sets in, they become paranoid. So now, Saul was looking over his shoulder every, every way he turned. Every, every, every person that, that could be deemed a threat, he had spies everywhere. So this was going on in the case of, of, of when, when Samuel was traveling. And, and see, Samuel didn't have an idea as to how he was going to depose Saul. But then Samuel began to realize it's not my place to depose Saul. It's my place to find, to, to find Jesse. And see, and, and God had already told him, why am I jumping ahead of myself here? I think I is. Okay, let me continue reading first before I jump to that point. Let's look at uh, verses uh, 6 through uh, 10. And it said, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliam and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the Lord looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Okay, so he so Samuel had been told to go to Jesse. And basically, one of Jesse's sons were, was to inherit the throne of Saul. And so he found Jesse. And see, and what he what God was saying is that he, he still he understood Samuel. Because see, in the past, so many kings were chosen because they were supposed to be strong people and because the, the average king had to be someone that was able to fight and this, that, and other. So you look for certain physical attributes. But God was telling Samuel, you're not going to look for these types of things. I have chosen who I want to be the king. And actually he was giving him a hint that and he's not going to look like any, anybody that you think he's, he's supposed to look. He was setting Samuel up so that Samuel wouldn't overlook 
who the real choice, who the next king is supposed to be. And, you know, we have a habit of doing that. And there's an old saying, what is it? Be, uh, 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 beauty is only skin deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The temptations with saying, beauty is only skin deep. Well, you know, uh, God knew the, 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 the uh, qualities, the kingly qualities that were necessary for what he was, a, what the next king had to have. And so he already knew who had to be chosen. So he had, so he had Samuel find Jesse. And again, everybody in the community knew what Samuel was there for. And so when he found Jesse, Lord, I might as well finish reading this whole story because I'm, I'm just, just, just jumping off in here. Uh, let me finish reading here. And Samuel said unto, excuse me, let, let's look at uh, verses 11 through 13. And then we just finish this story out here. And Samuel said unto Jesus, excuse me, and Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto, unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for he will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and withal of the beauty of countenance and godly looking, uh, God and, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of all and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Okay. So, when Samuel got to Jesse, and Jesse, you know, the first, the first son was brought to him, the eldest son. And, you know, we've already talked about uh, uh, birthrights. So uh, naturally, Jesse immediately thought, okay, well, it's going to be my eldest son. He's, he, he, he maintains my birthright. And, and, and this, that, and the other, and so therefore he's the strongest, and this, that, and the, paraded him in. And Jesse said, uh, I mean, and Samuel said, nope, that's not the one. So he brought in son number two. Nah, that ain't the one. Number three. I don't feel no king there. Nope, that's not the one. See, God was sitting, sitting there telling him, telling, telling uh, Samuel, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. And all but one of Jesse's sons paraded in front of of, uh, of Samuel. None of them were the ones. And so, so basically Samuel was asked again, you know, you don't have any more sons. Well, we got one. You know, he's out tending the sheep because he was the, the smallest, he was the runt, he was the youngest. You know, and he was the little shepherd boy out in the field. Samuel said, I need to see him. 
So they paraded him in. And once they paraded him in, then they turned and realized, or should I say, I, I shouldn't say that they, I should say Samuel, recognized the fact that this was the one right here. This was the one that, that, that we need to be talking about right here. As smelly as he was, as unkept as he was, this was the one. He was a skinny little boy. He wasn't bulky like these other brothers were. This was the one. God chose him. And with that, part of, of, of David's, I mean, and part of, uh, uh, of Samuel's task was he had to anoint him. He had, I mean, he was anointed, but they, they had to present him. This smelly, little skinny, probably not needed little boy. I'm, good, I'm, just, I'm just teasing about the not needed part. But the least likely of Jesse's sons was to be the next king of Israel. And with him comes the innocence. With David, with David comes like a clean slate. He's not bound by a lot of, uh, it, of, of high expectations because he was simple. God uses ordinary people. If you accept him, God uses ordinary people to do his work. He seldom uses people, people with uh, lofty opinions of themselves because it's more about them than it is about what his, the work is, is, that needs to be done. God uses ordinary people. So just because you may not be a political leader, just because you may not be the, the pastor of, 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 of a 10,000 member, member uh, of, uh, congregation, just because you may have an income of less than $20,000 a year, don't mean that you can't do God's work. God uses ordinary people. He chose this smelly, clumsy looking shepherd to rule over Israel. David was hand selected. He was heavenly selected. But Samuel has to be credited with, also with, being willing to do God's work. Because, like I said, he knew the hit was going to be on him by Saul when it came time to, for Saul to be replaced. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We're glad that you are able to, to use ordinary people because our ordinariness is the result of our innocence and lack of contamination by outside forces. We ask that, that you continue to keep us and bless us as we attempt to do your will.
for these and many other blessings in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you all for, for today's lesson. I got an announcement. Uh, next week we're going to look to open up Sunday school. Next Sunday. And when I finally got some Sunday school books, I finally got some Sunday school books, finally got some Sunday school books. So, uh, we're asking that you come on back now that the church is fully open and we'll have to make some adjustments on the fly. But, you know, we are, we are God's people and we're creative like that, so we can do this, okay? Uh, so let's look forward to coming on back. All right, talk to you later. Y'all have a great week. <laughs>